symptoms are and the grouping of symptoms for lack of a better explanation doctors have told you you have chronic fatigue syndrome correct and um but you have nothing there's n there's no test there's nothing that showed that you had a specific problem that could be treated or even a problem that could not be treated correct it's the most frustrating thing in the world because one is such a wimpy name two there's no definitive test for it all i know is that i woke up in one morning in february 1988 and ever since then i've been sick um, and you have no idea what happened the night before, or the month before, or the year before that would cause that. You didn't eat something strange. I mean, I, I know that I was, like, going all out. I was taking something like 27 units of college and working a full-time job. You know, I was just absolutely fully extended. And then, boom, I was fully leveled. Did you think you had HIV? Yeah, because people were talking about, even though at that point I was a virgin, I hadn't had sex with, you know, anyone outside of myself. So I knew intellectually it couldn't possibly be HIV, but you know, when I went, first went to see a doctor, that was their first thing, and, you know, they, they, they tested me for that right off. I, um, uh, when I was in college, I had a bout of, uh, uh, what's the kissing disease? What's that called? Mononucleosis. Yeah, mono, and it... I mean, I thought I was going to die. I just, I had no strength. I had no energy. And I, I dragged myself to uh, Kaiser, which was the plan that I was under with my parents. And my mom met me at the Kaiser Hospital in Woodland Hills. And I couldn't sit up. I mean, I just had no strength. And the doctor came in and he was very rude to me and said, what's, what's wrong with you? Are you on drugs? Was the first thing he said to me. Are you on drugs? And I said, no, I can barely swallow. I have no strength. And he said, I'll be back in a few minutes and slammed the door and walked out. And uh, I, I don't know, he must have thought that, oh, you know, college kid and he must be on something and that's why he's behaving this way. I was just, I was just in the worst kind of situation. He looked at my throat and he saw that it was inflamed and red and he saw that I could barely swallow and he very quickly identified you've got mononucleosis go home and get some bed rest and you know drink lots of fluids and you'll be fine in a couple of weeks and sure enough that's what it was but I can't imagine that going on for months and months and years which is what you've had yeah and I'd had mononucleosis two years previous so what happened to me again um it just seemed like a repetition of the mono except for this time it didn't go away which was worse yeah, the you know the this this CFS was far worse because it didn't go away. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm sure over the years you've done tons of research on the internet and read books and talked to doctors and anyone uh, who has any medical uh, understanding. You've probably had the conversation with. And over how many how many years are we talking about? Eighteen years? Twenty two? Twenty years. years? Yeah, twenty years. Have you have you come any closer to any understanding about what it is you have? No. And and it manifests itself for you today, 20 years later, in what? It's just hard to get out of bed in the morning or you're like um, right now you feel Well, like remember like after you'd had mono for about two or three weeks, you were just still weak, you know, even if you could kind of start to resume a normal life. So I'm just constantly battling with exhaustion. And that's... So I, you know, I, I take naps two or three times a day, not to sleep, but just to like regather my strength. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you've talked to psychologists and psychiatrists that have probably theorized that maybe you're just depressed. Um, actually, I have talked to psychiatrists and psychologists and therapists and, and everyone. I've ex sought extensive medical treatment, but no one's actually uh, suggested maybe you're just depressed. I mean, I've certainly tried every type of medication that's been recommended, and I've tried virtually every type of therapy for um, this disease. I've, you know, tried you know, psychotropic medications. and Well, it certainly uh, would make you depressed. <laughs> I mean, yes, it yeah. certainly is depressing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, are, are you a depressed person? Um, no, I mean, I certainly experience depression at times, um, but uh, I'm, you know, someone who's, who's active to the absolute limits of his abilities. Um, if anyone reads my blogs, they'll see me, you know, posting 10, 12 times a day, you know, posting at 2 a.m., and, at all hours, so I'm I'm as actively and fully invested out there in life as as possible. 
uh, when I before I brought you on the air, I, I talked to you off the air, and I and I uh, I said to you, "Is there anything you don't want to talk about?" And you said, "No, you you can ask me anything." And so I'm going to ask you a difficult question, and you can always say I don't care to answer that. But do you have a diagnosed mental illness? Um, I did. Uh, depends who you talk to. I had a psychiatrist. My parents were so upset with my blogging um, in t- year 2000 that they. They offered me a free trip home to Australia if I would see the doctors of their choice. And I had no problem seeing the doctors of their choice. And I loved the free trip home to Australia. So I went back and I saw a psychiatrist uh, for three hours, among other doctors. And the psychiatrist, on the basis of those three hours, diagnosed me with narcissistic personality disorder. <laughs> and I don't, mean, I don't mean to laugh, but I, I mean... You could say that about anyone who kind of likes what they're doing and likes uh, has self-interest, right? Maybe. So I took I took her diagnosis that she gave to my sister, and I put the whole thing on my website because I was you know, obviously that must be a narcissist. So it's like more attention for me. So um, I'm not sure whether I have NPD or not, but I certainly do have narcissistic personality tendencies, as do as you mentioned, many uh, creative people and uncreative people. Um, and so that's that's the extent of your... Because uh, there's one video where you're, you're uh, showing all the different drugs that you're taking, and one was lithium. That's a very powerful drug that's they don't give to people who have narcissistic personality disorders. Um, actually, they do in the um, accompanying NPD is like, you know, histrionic... Uh, you know that's the tendency, and so um, while I'm I'm not bipolar, I do once again have some tendencies in that direction. I have, you know, fairly turbulent emotional life, um, not to the point where I you know ever do harm to myself or, or to anyone else in any sort of physical way. But you know I do go from elation to to despair, and so the the lithium uh, even yeah. level that out. Mm-hmm. Where are you now? Oh, I haven't taken any lithium for for months. So, um, so on the one hand, I do have a slightly more tur- uh, more turbulent emotional life. Um, on the other hand, I'm free from the pretty significant side effects that that lithium brings. So, I mean, right now I'm pretty centered. Um, but overall, in the past two months, um, I feel like the world's coming down on my head because I was just thrown out of my fifth synagogue, and it was for something so ticky tacky. Um, but right before Rosh Hashanah, I got booted, and so that was like a very devastating blow that I, I'm still dealing with. It doesn't get easier? It does not get easier. <laughs> I mean, I'd make it easier on myself if I simply stopped you know, writing controversial articles. But. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, what... Um what do you go? Th- do, you, do you try and plead your way back in, or once they say, you know, we want you out? How, first of all, how does that happen? They call you into the rabbi's office and they say, look, this, what you've done here, and the well, you're, you're the talk of the community, and it's a distraction to the rest of the congregants. Or how, what's the conversation? Um, well, the latest time it was, you know, I'm going to suspend you for two weeks. You know, Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur, because I'm I'm so upset at this article you wrote. I think it was a very cruel article, and I want you to learn this lesson. Well, I then compounded my my error by loudly complaining about my expulsion on my blog, which you know may very well have gotten me permanently banned from from the synagogue. So, I, I never did pray to God that He make me a doormat for rabbis to walk over. Uh, you have very contentious relationships with rabbis. What do you suspect is the source of that? Um, I'm replaying my father's life. So if anyone's read the, a new biography of my father that's called Desmond Ford, reformist theologian, gospel revivalist, they'd pretty much understand why I am the way I am. My father's a very controversial theologian and evangelist, is controversial. He's almost 80 years old and still going. And uh, I'm I'm replaying his life by you know constantly getting thrown. Well, you're out. very self-aware. Why can't you just get along? Why can't you just you know go with the program? If that's what you've decided you want for yourself, is you want to be involved in the community, and you, I asked you the question: Has the community been good to you? And your answer, without any hesitation, was yes. Why Why don't you just figure out a way to sort of get along better? 
I don't know. I don't roll that way. Everyone tells me to like, uh, you know, flatter the rabbis and say, "Oh, thank you for your reproof," and I'm so sorry that I did what I did, and and you 